So I want to talk for a little bit about fermentation and how fermentation works. But I think the first thing that we should talk about is what is fermentation? And fermentation is an anaerobic process by which cells turn chemical energy, which is usually glucose, into ATP, which is the common energy currency of the cell. And to do this, they use an endogenous electron acceptor. And endogenous is just a fancy word for uh, meaning that it's, it's internal to the cell or it's a part of the cell. Uh, but what does all this mean, basically? Well, first off, anaerobic means that this process doesn't require oxygen. So this is different from the way we normally get energy from sugar, which is cellular respiration. And we'll talk a little bit about how this is different. And we'll talk a little bit about what the role of oxygen in cellular respiration is. So uh, what I've drawn here is uh, this sort of yellow hexagon thing. This is glucose. So this is an energy-rich molecule. And the cell is going to extract energy uh, from this sugar molecule. And the energy that it's extracting is actually electrical energy. It's very similar to the sort of uh, electrical energy that is used to run your computer uh, or a fan or anything like that. And just like a battery stores electrical energy in a chemical form, sugar is a way of storing electrical energy in a chemical form. And this electrical energy is electrons. It's the movement of electrons. So what we're going to do is we're going to take electrons off of the sugar molecule and we're going to store them on a special molecule called NAD, uh, NAD+, which is the way your body stores electricity. This is like your body's rechargeable battery. It's a temporary electrical storage mechanism. And NAD plus means that it doesn't have, it's empty, it's uncharged. Uh, when we put electrons on it, it will become NADH. So we see this process here. The electrons are coming off of the glucose and they're being stored on NADH and you can see NADH goes from being a white energy depleted form to this yellow energy rich form. I'm going to use yellow as the color to indicate that there's electrical energy stored on it. Now in aerobic respiration, which is the normal sort of way we get energy. It's the way a lot of things get energy from, uh, from sugar, from molecules. It's the most efficient. It's the best way. You end up with the most energy at the end. But it's aerobic, which means it requires oxygen. And the reason why it requires oxygen is oxygen is where the electrons are going to end up. So the electrons are going to come off of NADH and then they're going to end up on oxygen, and when oxygen absorbs the electrons, it becomes water. And when this happens, uh, your body, your cells, use the energy. Uh, this electrical energy is sort of like water rolling down a water wheel, and there's a lot of enzymes involved in this process. There's like 27 different molecules, and it's very complicated, but that's not important right now. The important thing is that uh, your body harnesses the energy uh, of these electrons converting oxygen into water, and it uses that to turn a pump that's going to convert ADP into ATP. And uh, ADP is the energy poor form, and ATP is the energy rich form that your body can use to do, oh, pretty much anything that it wants. And so that's the eventual goal of aerobic respiration and uh, of fermentation as well, though with fermentation it's going to happen a little differently. So oxygen is acting as an electron sponge. Uh, it's absorbing the electrons from NADH. And this is important because your cells only have a limited amount of NAD plus and NADH. And if you didn't have uh, oxygen, all of the body's NADH would get full of electrons and it's like the battery would be 
at full capacity and you can't charge it anymore. And that means that you wouldn't be able to use any more glucose, any more sugar. Your, your body would be full of electrons, full of energy, but it wouldn't be in that usable ATP form. So you need oxygen to take those electrons away, and that will sort of unstop the pipes and allow a smooth flow of energy through the cell. Now, fermentation is anaerobic, so it doesn't have oxygen. So then the question is, where do the electrons go in fermentation? Where are they going to end up? So in fermentation, just like in aerobic respiration, you start off with an energy-rich glucose molecule, and you're going to take those electrons away, and you're going to load them on to NADH. When that happens, uh, because you have a movement of electrons, and anytime you have electrons moving, you have some free energy that you can capture, your body will capture a little bit of that energy in uh, ADP by turning it to ATP. Now, not a whole lot. Not as much as it happens in aerobic respiration, where you're ending it up with the electrons on water. So this is a very skinny arrow here. And you're making a little bit of ATP. And uh, when you do that, you end up with NADH. That's where the electrons are going to end up. And also when this happens... When you take the electrons away from glucose, uh, you're breaking a chemical bond. Chemical bonds are made out of electrons, and so when you take the electrons away, you're breaking a chemical bond, and you're cutting the glucose in half. That's why this is called glycolysis. Lysis means to cut, and glyco means sugar. So glycolysis is the cutting of the sugar. You're removing some energy from the glucose, and you're cutting it in half. So I've drawn it in this orange color here, which is uh, uh, the means that it's sort of lost some energy. And the sugar is now in two pieces. Each of these two pieces is called pyruvate, um, which pyruvate is basically half a sugar molecule. So... Uh, now the electrical energy is going to be put back on to the half sugar molecule, the pyruvate. So in aerobic respiration, what we normally do is the energy, the electrons, end up on oxygen, right? Here, what we've done is we have removed energy from glucose and we've cut it in half. Now we have two half glucoses called pyruvate, and we're going to put that electrical energy back on to the pyruvate. So you see here we're going to take the energy off of NADH, and it's going to go on to the pyruvate. And the pyruvate is going to become energy rich, because it has those electrons now. It's not quite as energy rich as the glucose was before, because we took a little bit of energy away and put it onto the ATP, but most of the energy is still there. This means that we now have more NAD+. So we've regenerated that, we've generated more NAD+, and that's going to unstop the pipes, just like having oxygen suck the electrons up would unstop the pipes. The important thing is you have to have a regular cycling between NADH and NAD+. Uh, a lot of the le electrical energy is lost. This isn't a very efficient way of getting energy from glucose. But you've got that small amount of ATP that you've gained. So you've gotten a little bit of energy out of it. Now, uh, fermentation is very common. Normally, in everyday life, most of us uh, are used to aerobic respiration. We think that's where you get energy, right? That's You have to breathe. And we are a breathing organism. But not all organisms use oxygen. A lot of them don't, mostly bacteria and microbes. Uh, probably the the biggest you know area where we are familiar with, especially in college, you know, uh, beer plays uh, uh, beer played a big role in my college experience. I'm sure 
all of you are somewhat familiar with it. And beer is made through fermentation. It's made through a variant of fermentation called alcohol fermentation. Beer yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, can use oxygen if there's oxygen around. Uh, but if there's no oxygen around, then it will switch to a fermentation lifestyle. It's less efficient, but it can continue living even if there's no air to breathe, even if there's no oxygen to breathe. And that's part of how you make beer, uh, is you need to deprive the yeast of oxygen. Keeping oxygen out of your fermenting mix is an important part of making any sort of alcoholic beverage. Now, in beer making, in alcohol fermentation, we're going to break glucose down into two pyruv pyruvate molecules, and these pyruvate molecules will be broken down into uh, carbon dioxide and acetaldehyde, and then the electrons will be put back on the acetaldehyde, which turns it into ethanol. So it's, it's sort of a two-step process here. And carbon dioxide is going to leave. And when carbon dioxide leaves during this fermentation, that's how the bubbles get in your beer. It's from the carbon dioxide that leaves when fermentation breaks uh, pyruvate down into acetaldehyde. So let's take a look at this process here. We have an energy-rich NADH molecule, and we have this energy-poor pyruvate. And uh, what's going to happen is we're going to take the, the electrical energy off of NADH, and we're going to load it onto the pyruvate, and the pyruvate's going to break into two pieces. So what we see here, there comes the electrical energy. And here you see we've loaded the electrical energy onto the pyruvate that's caused CO2 to break off. And we end up with alcohol, which has got most of the electrical energy that we originally got from the glucose. That's alcohol fermentation. That's not the only type of fermentation, though. Uh, there are lots of different types of fermentation, but the two big ones are alcohol and lactic acid. So we just talked about alcohol. Let's take a look at lactic acid fermentation. And uh, the more common place that you're going to encounter this is with cheese. Cheese is fermented. You can't make cheese without bacteria that do the fermentation process. Same applies to yogurt. Same applies to a lot of different things. So the bacteria in milk are going to break uh, lactose, which is a milk sugar, into two pyruvates. Again, these are half glucose molecules or half lactose. Uh, you can get pyruvate from either lactose or glucose. And then the NADH is going to feed its electrons back onto pyruvate, but this time carbon dioxide isn't going to leave. So we're not going to get any bubbles. The bubbles in like Swiss cheese actually come from a completely different organism. They aren't a part of the fermentation process. So... Uh, so with this, we're turning pyruvate directly into lactic acid, which is the energy-rich form of, uh, of pyruvate. So when you add the electrons back on, the pyruvate turns into lactic acid. Lactic acid is an acid, so it tastes acidic. It tastes sour or sharp. This is what gives cheese its sharpness. This is what gives yogurt its sour taste. Same with sauerkraut and kimchi and uh, a bunch of different pickles. Those are all fermented products. And what gives them their characteristic taste is bacteria that are doing this lactic acid fermentation process. Another big place that you're going to find lactic acid fermentation is in you and all other animals. All mammals... Uh, can do lactic acid fermentation. It happens in our muscle cells when we are exercising our muscles so fast that we can't get oxygen to them fast enough. If they need energy faster than they can get oxygen, then they do lactic acid fermentation. But you don't want a bunch of lactic acid to build up in your muscles because muscles are, you know, they're normal tissue. They, you know, your tissue doesn't like having a bunch of acid in it all the time. 
plus uh, it's not a very efficient process. So uh, when you burn sugar by fermentation, you're leaving most of the energy behind. Now, you might need to, to do that because you've got to get as much energy as fast as possible because you've got to run away from a bear or something. Um, but when your body is resting and can get plenty of oxygen back to your muscles, your body wants to be able to recover that energy. This is an important distinction between lactic acid fermentation and alcohol fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation is reversible. Alcohol fermentation is not. With alcohol fermentation, the carbon dioxide bubbles away and it leaves. And since it's gone, you cannot recombine it with the ethanol to make pyruvate again. But with lactic acid, nothing is gone. Theoretically, you can get the energy back off of the lactic acid and turn it back into pyruvate. And then pyruvate can go through the normal cell respiration process. And you can do that at any time in the future. And let's see how that happens. So uh, with lactic acid fermentation, you're going to start off with NADH, energy rich, and pyruvate, which is going to be energy poor. And you turn the NADH into NAD+. Plus. The electrons leave, and they end up on the pyruvate. And this energy rich form of pyruvate is lactic acid. But sometime later, when you've got plenty of oxygen left, uh, and, and you're, you're resting, uh, you're not running away anymore, you can reverse this process. You can take the electrons back off of lactic acid, turning it into pyruvate again. The electrons go back onto NADH, and then everything continues as if nothing had happened, as if the, the lactic acid fermentation had never occurred. And uh, so that's how fermentation works. It's one of the main ways that organisms get energy. And it all has to do with where electrons go and how they flow. With cellular respiration, the carbons in the sugar all end up becoming carbon dioxide. And the electrons all end up on oxygen becoming water with uh, with fermentation, you, what you're going to do is take the electrons off of the sugar, you're going to cause a chemical change in the sugar, and then you load those electrons right back onto the, the byproducts of the sugar that you started with. So the electrons are just sort of making a loop and ending up right back where they started. Okay, so I hope that helps explain this.